So I think this is probably the most dirt this car's ever seen. You can see it's certainly due a wee wash, but uh, that's something I'll certainly be getting into quite soon. I'll be getting the full the full treatment. Still looks pretty good though. Even when it's really dirty, I think the paint work is still pretty good. But uh, yeah, it polishes up very nice. So I'm looking forward to doing that actually. There's something kind of therapeutic I think about polishing your car. Maybe that's just me. Hi guys, Robert McGowan here. I'm a long term Porsche owner and enthusiast. And I've written a few Porsche books as well that have been well received by Porsche themselves and the online Porsche community. So today we're out playing in the Boxster, first time for a while. It's a, it's a cold January day in Glasgow. The roads are quite greasy and there's a bit of ice in the roads as well, but you know the Boxster is always, it just inspires confidence, you know. It's, uh, it's so sure footed the, the Boxster. That I don't feel too too fussed about pressing on, um, even in these wintry conditions. If I was in my old N11, I'd feel a little bit differently. Um, the old air code N11s handle very differently to the boxers. But anyway, here we are, and it's a nice opportunity to get out and to stretch the boxers legs a little bit. It's quite a cold day today and um, I had an opportunity for the first time to use the, the heated seats in this car um, which were very nice I've got to say, uh, you know, can warm you up nice and toasty a day like today. However it's coming up to MOT time which if you're in the States uh, an MOT in the UK is just like a, a, an annual um, sort of check for the vehicle to make sure it's still road worthy. It's something that we have here in the UK. Um, so yes, this, this car is due to MOT. I can do it next month. You can actually take your car for its MOT one month early in advance. So that's usually what I do. Um, gives me some time to, to, to plan for any kind of repairs or anything that's perhaps unexpected. But I'm kind of hoping this car passes its MOT first time. There's nothing wrong that I'm aware of uh, that needs fixed. Also, around about the same time is it's due its um, its service as well, which is a kind of which is a big service this time. It's the uh, they call it the 120,000 mile service or the 12 year old service. Um, we sometimes call it, and this car is um, 12 years old, so it's due a kind of a fairly big service. There'll be some items over and above the usual servicing, including the brake fluid um, change and various add-ons, bits and pieces um, as part of that service. I will be taking it to an official Porsche centre to have the car serviced. I don't often do that, um, it's not always necessary, especially if your car is that bit older. The reason I'm going to do it with this car is because it's still quite low mileage. It's, um, it's sitting at 41,000 just now. Up until now, it's just had all its services done in Porsche OP Glasgow. So for that reason, I thought, you know, I'm just going to continue with the, the official Porsche servicing with this car. Um, for the time being, anyway. As for the future, we'll see how I feel about it. If I have this car for, you know, X amount of years into the future, there probably will come a time where I'll, I'll go independent uh, servicing. Because um, you get, you, you know, independent garage servicing, um, depending on the garage, can be really good value and it's just as good as official Porsche servicing. And you get the stamp in the book and all the rest of it. Um, this car isn't currently warranted uh, through Porsche or anywhere else. So, you know, I don't need to stick to the official Porsche servicing, um, which he would do if he had a warranty. Like I say, however, I'm going to do it in this case anyway, even though it's, it's 
a bit more expensive to do that, to go through the official Prosport um, servicing network than what it is with an independent, but I'm going to go and do that anyway. Yeah, yeah I'm just, I'm still loving the Boxster experience very much. Um, as you probably know, it's my second Boxster, I, and I just, I, I bought it, you know, just to, just to have a, a to, to share some more time with it and to, and to go on various road trips that I've got planned for this year. I may go up to Sky later on this year. Um, or open or beyond. Um, I actually thought about the possibility of doing the the North 500 uh, coastal route in this car, which I might I might do uh, later on in this year. But you know, most of my time is spent in this car, coming out at this very road here, um, which is a lovely mix of different different types of um, bends and fast fast bends and tight corners some sweeping curves and some long straights. This road for me is, is, a, is a great mix uh, to come out on and that's where I spend most of my time driving. Um, and for that reason, albeit the road, as you can, just as I'm saying that, the road's getting quite bumpy here. Um, I have noticed that actually, you know, that the, some of the potholes in the roads in the UK, they seem to have got a lot worse. But anyway, the boxer suspension is very supple um, and it handles these bumps really quite easily, albeit I slow down a little bit for them. But um, again, this is where I spend most of my time out driving these kind of wee roads. So for me, the Boxster, 252 brake horsepower, rear wheel drive, 6 speed gearbox, you know, that's more than enough power for me and the kind of driving that I do. You know, sure, sometimes you might think you fancy an S model or you fancy the top of the range 911, maybe a GT3 or something like that, um, or a Turbo or a Turbo S, that's fine, you know, they're all great, but like I've said before, guys, a lot of the time the base model beat a box till 911 came in, a lot of the time the base model is where it's at, it's a sweet spot between price, performance, you know, everything else, um, and it's like I said, for, for your own driving conditions, I mean, I can barely stretch this car's legs out here, same with an 11 if it was a, a GT3 RS or, or a Turbo, that opportunity would be even less so, and just when I'm saying that, there's a, a, a lorry pulled out, a tractor actually pulled down in front of us, um, there's a lot of agriculture around these three roads here, and there's, there's, you know, these kind of vehicles come and go quite a bit. So these, you know, some sort of opportunity to to go too fast, albeit an opportunity to overtake as well. <laughs> so, I the Boxster's overtaking ability is uh, it's more than enough for me. You know, it feels um. It feels pretty quick and does what it needs to do. So, I hope you guys are all out enjoying your Porsches all year round, even in the winter time. Um, stay tuned for some more videos. Like I say, I'll be doing some road trips. I have some more Porsche reviews. I've got a lot of stuff to share and uh, some nice scenery to share as well. Um, so, hopefully, you guys will stay tuned for that and I'll see you in the upcoming videos. And there's that track that I was telling you about.